Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Real Hazardous. And today we are going offshore fishing. At first, we gotta catch some bait. Bait this year has been very bipolar. It's either been really good or non-existent. So when it is really tough to find along the beach or at the inlet, a lot of times we'll go offshore and jig up baits with sabiki rigs. So we're gonna show you how we jig up some baits, give you some tips and tricks, and then show you how we use those baits to catch fish as opposed to some of our usual baits like pogies. Yeah. We'll try to get them off real quick. This will get us about three or four dozen. Might not even have to use the, uh, Soft, yeah. How far down are they? Towards the bottom. They're like maybe 10 feet above the bottom. There we go. Yep. It's on. It's important to always have sabikis on the boat because you never know when you'll need them. You'll never know when the bait aren't on the beach and you can't cast at them. And they come in handy in a lot of situations. Maybe it's during the winter. You want to get some bottom bait. Um, you know, getting cigar minnows and sardines and greenies, stuff like that, are all good bottom baits as well as topwater baits, you know, for striking fish. It's also good if you go out like dolphin fishing, you know, you find some bait fish hanging up under a weed line or floating debris. It's nice to be able to just jig them up right there. So it's good to have with you on the boat. Now, we went out to a spot offshore and most all wrecks have some sort of bait fish, but for some reason, some wrecks hold you know, more of the desirable bait fish that you want, such as cigar minnows or uh, greenies, stuff like that. And these bait fish, they may not be right on the wreck. A lot of times they'll be around it. Sometimes they'll be right on the surface. You can see them popping on the water. And sometimes they're below maybe halfway down 20, 30 feet. When you get there, it's important for the boat driver to really pay attention, okay? He's gonna be one to watching his screen and looking for that ball of bait that's just hovering there in the water. The guys, you know, the crewmates will obviously look on the surface. Sometimes there'll be birds over them and they'll see them popping on the top. They want to watch for that. You know, obviously pointing out to the boat driver so he can go that way if they see them. There they are. Up front. Straight in front of us. Okay, drop it down. You should be all over them. They're marking, they're marking thick. Man, this one's like a solid 15. So it's tough to keep the boat into it and to chase these schools, but it's marking really good right now. The boat driver needs to tell the fishermen how deep the baits are too. You don't wanna let your bait sink all the way to the bottom, you know, if they're midway down. The guys fishing with them takes a little bit of finesse and a little bit of skill to really get good at catching baits with a sabiki rig. First off, um, non-fishing aside, you need to make sure that you don't get tangled because there's a bunch of little hooks and they'll snag your shirt, other people's shirts, you know, other rods, they'll get all hung up in the lines. First off, keep your sabiki rig, you know, if you've already got it rigged up, make sure that rod's well away from any other rods. You know, if you put in your T-top, leave a space on either side next to it. Watch out when you're using it, okay? Make sure you hang it outside the boat, don't let it get tangled up, stuff like that. When you start fishing with it, you're gonna drop it down, and um, if your line doesn't have any kind of marking on depth, you just kind of gotta get a feel for it. You know, what I usually do is I'll count, you know, how long it's been falling, and when I feel fish pop in it, you want to pay attention. You'll know that's how deep the fish typically are. So you can tell your buddies, hey, let it drop for like five seconds, stop it, start jigging. Then, as you're letting it, you know, as it's down there and it's jigging. You know, I usually kind of just gently pop it or maybe reel it up a smidge and drop it down. And when you feel one hit on it, just wait, give it some time, because that's when all the other fish will hit it as well. And it helps if you can bring that thing loaded up with four, five, six baits on at a time, because you know, you just, it goes much quicker catching bait and you can get to fishing. Okay, so drop it down, pay attention, feel it. Sometimes I'll be at the front of the boat, but if, if I'm not really getting where the bait are, I'll actually walk back, stand next to the uh, boat driver, watching the recorder, and as soon as I can see it, I can just react quicker, I'll let it drop down. Now, another important thing, okay? When you reel up the, the bait, you know, the rig with all the bait fish on it, immediately take those bait fish off and put them in the live well, okay? Um, some people, when they're new, it just it doesn't, 
you just don't think of it at the time, but they bring it overboard and they're like, all right, I got a bunch of fish and these fish are just dangling there. And, and you know, when these fish are out of water, they're kind of like drowning, you know, <laughs> they can't breathe out of water. So when you got this rig over the side, you need to get these baits in your live well ASAP so that they stay alive and good quality and good swimming. Now, another little trick you can do is keep a five gallon bucket with you. You know, so if you got guys at the front of the boat, just put that bucket there, put some water in it, and then you can catch them. And that way, every time you bring your rod up, you don't have to walk all the way to the back and then all the way forward. You know, you can just take your baits off, throw them, draw it back down. You kind of a little more efficient with your time. In terms of the rod and reel, I like to use for sabiki, you know, bait catching. Generally, I prefer a kind of a heavy duty spinner. That's for like cigar minnows and greenies and stuff like that. If we're catching big blue runners, then I prefer more of a conventional reel, maybe like more of a bottom reel, like my pin fathoms or four all or something like that. Something with some crank to it. Now the quality of your sabiki rig does matter. I learned that this year. At one point we were fishing next to a friend, uh, same school boat, we were right next to each other. And like, we're like catching hardly any. And he comes by, catches a bunch. And that happened several times. Come to find out we were using different sabiki rigs and ours appear to be much lower quality. You know, I like the real fish skin sabiki rigs. Sometimes I have a green dot, a little glow bead, sometimes a red one. I don't really notice, you know, it being a difference whether you choose green or red. Um, and I'll post the link to some, some good sabiki rigs that I've found. And if you have a favorite, by all means, share it, let, it know, let us know, and, and we'll give it a try too, because uh, the ones I had weren't good, but the ones my friend had, you know, were definitely better. So we get our baits and we head to the fishing spot. Put out the baits and it's a little different um, than pogies, what we're used to. You know, sometimes with these cigar minnows and other baits, like I found that they're a little uh, more likely to come off the hook. Seems like, I don't know, something about their nose, putting that hook in tends to wear out soon. Sometimes it'll wiggle off. So that's kind of the main thing you want to watch for when using those baits. Today, we're out here on the water with Brian and Derek, and of course, my dad. And we're out there trolling at a spot that's been doing well. We've caught some kingfish here in the past. Started out, it went kind of slow. It was a little windy, a little rough. I don't know if that had the, the fish a little lethargic on the bite. But when we did start catching fish, we started catching Spanish mackerel. It's pretty cool. Now, we've done really well on Spanish mackerel at the jetties, um, especially early springtime. Seems like they come up and you can do really well catching them on tiny drone spoons. I got a video on it. If y'all want to see it, I'll put a link and check it out. But offshore at this time of year, the Spanish get much bigger. That time of the year, you know, they're 12, 15, 16 inches. And, and now they're, you know, they're almost two feet, 26 inches and pretty, pretty nice Spanish mackerel. They're good fish to eat and they're fun to catch. Hadn't y'all just come to eat in the sandwich? Sometimes when it's slow, like, you know, today we had a couple just fish get off, had a hard time getting a good early morning bite, you know, we'll uh, just have some fun, tell fish stories, you know, do things that change our luck, um, change which motors run in, swap rods around, change out baits, take a lunch break, pee at the back of the boat, you know. I don't know if logically, scientifically, that makes a difference, but sometimes you do that and boom, the fish start biting. I don't know what it is. Yeah, I don't know if it has anything to do with the motor change either. <laughs> did you change we back did, or are you yeah. still on the same? I went to the other okay. one about what? Then you did swap now. back? Since, I think since we started uh, catching all the fish. So maybe, well, that was the sandwich thing too, because y'all had a sandwich. Yeah, <laughs> it was like pop, pop, pop. Might have been the combo. We we'll do the sandwich again. Maybe you have there to do sandwich, motor change, sandwich. Broke the spell. Finally got a fish back on. What is it? Right here. 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 That's a broken line. Too. See that ladder line? How it breaks? At least it's a break. It's a break. Long 
Yeah. Those will come off pretty easy. Yeah, if you want to walk up. There you go. Nice on. Yeah, you can't Hang on, hang on, watch it, watch it, watch it. Push it out. It's, it's gonna hit that. Yeah, there you go. Alright, push it, push it. Ready? You gotta get them on the first one, ready? There we go. Try this again, right? Yep. Oh, shoot. He's there, he's there. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. That one's falling pretty good. Look at him, he likes to dart around. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> What depth was that? 35. 35. Yeah, might be easier to. There you go. They destroy that wire, don't they? Yeah. Finally, when the fish did start biting, we started getting into some good kingfish. King was were fun to catch. Uh, the baits did well, and that's kind of a plus to having some of these baits that we jig up, like cigar minnows and um, Spanish sardines, greenies. They seem to live better in your live well. You can put more in your live well. They don't get the red nose. Sometimes they're more energetic. Not always as big, but if you do get a big one, they do really well. So they are good baits to have. And I actually like those kinds of baits better for bottom fishing than pogies. I don't know if it's because they're kind of matching the hatch. You know, you're sabiking them off the same wreck or similar wreck where you catch fish like snapper and grouper, but they work really well. Cigar minnows for snapper are just great, especially alive, but even dead, they're good baits. And these baits at the end of the day, you know, if we have leftovers, you know, you can take them and freeze them and use them as cut bait on your next fishing trip. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you learned some things about speaking bait fish. Hope it helps you guys catch more fish this winter and the upcoming summer. If you guys got any questions, by all means comment below and we'll see you on the next video.